My name is Christine Chapman. This is Marco Blau. And we're talking to you from Cologne, Germany. And I wanted to say a few quick words about what we do. We're both, I'm a horn player. My French horn right here. I'm a trumpet player and this is my instrument. And we play in an ensemble of 15 musicians and we play contemporary music. We work with composers, the people who write music and we help them uh, create new sounds and new music that we can play for people all in concerts all around the world. Um, at this point, we were gonna talk about Marco's idea about the project. I hope you enjoyed the little lecture you saw from Peter Holmes last week. He was talking about ancient history of the lip blown instruments like the precursors of our modern instruments. I thought it was fascinating. And often I wonder, you know, when you go back to this time where the first uh, instruments appeared, if you just try to imagine what that world sounded like. There were no phones, no computers. There were no machines, no cars, even no planes in the air. There wasn't even electricity. There was no industry. Um, maybe there weren't even cities. It must have been incredibly quiet back then. Yeah, but can you imagine the sounds that you could hear? If all of these sounds were taken out of the picture, what would be left over? You would hear the wind. Maybe you would hear the roaring of the water, the river, or the sea. Bird song. Bird songs. You would hear um, animals maybe calling to each other, shouting, roaring, growling. You might um, also be able to hear things very clearly from a very far distance, especially if something threatening was coming, like a, like a stampede or an avalanche. Um, the loudest of these sounds, what would have been the loudest sounds? Maybe... Earthquake. Earthquake or... A big waterfall. Waterfall, a volcano. A volcano bursting. Yep. Um, you could hear it at a huge distance and probably also just thunder. Ooh, thunder. The lightning and the thunder. That must have been so loud for people who had no other sounds going on like that. So just imagine a thunder getting over your head and you do not really understand where it comes from. Probably people in those times would be scared, really afraid. Yeah. And what would you want to do? when you get really scared and get threatened by a very loud sound, you probably want to shout back, ah, stop it, ah! And um, maybe that wouldn't be loud enough because the voice is very, very limited. So you would take your hands to make a kind of a megaphone and call, ah! be quiet. Something like what that. What if you would find a little tool, like an animal horn, animal as exotic as this one here in the back, or an animal horn like this, maybe you could also use it as a megaphone. <laughs> the sound would have more direction. And what would happen if by mistake you were calling through that instrument <laughs> and your lips would start vibrating? This might have been the very, very beginning of our lip blown instruments. And it could have been things like horns, but what if you lived on the beach and there weren't any cows at the beach? But what if you found something like that? A shell. You could also use it to project your voice. You could use it to project your voice. And if you're busy talking and talking and you spit a lot when you talk, you might also get a sound. <laughs> instrument to reach further than the voice could ever get and just imagine in that time when you would be able to play on that instrument if you would go back in your cave every day and practice your instrument and you would come out and play it for the people probably people would think you would have magic powers i think that's a very interesting thing to realize 
if you practice well on your instrument, you gain magic powers. And it's so interesting that around the planet and so many human cultures around the planet, these kind of instruments appear and are used for many, many different purposes, like communicating for far away or for hunting or to talk to the gods or talk to the demons. Magic powers, just imagine. My dream, my project that we mentioned is called Global Breath. Because this sound, this magic power, often thought of, I often thought of what if people, what if all the people that have practiced on their horns use their magic powers to connect and blow a sound that can reach around the planet? What if all the magic people around the earth would connect and create this one line of magic? Wouldn't that be amazing? Just without any mobile phones, without computers, just through the horns. We do, you know, we've got magic. I mean, this is this is the old magic, but we actually, here we are. We're connecting right now through this meeting, but I wonder if we could find a way to actually play together to create the sound. So we want to ask you for your help, every one, single one of you, to think about what kind of sound you can really produce very well on the, your instrument. What kind of sound is your favorite sound? What kind of sound shows the power you have and we would like to ask you to record this sound and send it to i think beat can explain you where you will get an email address you upload it and you send it to us we will collect all the sounds and then we will start building a continuous sound it's like compose like what composers do they they take they take ideas and sounds and melodies and they organize them together to make a piece of music that we can all listen to and play together. And better even, we will try to compose during this week when we get all your sounds in, we will try to compose a new piece and we really want that to show that piece to you next week where we have a half an hour of rehearsing and we would like you to join in. We will make parts for everybody so everybody can join in in that composition. We will rehearse and then perform that piece for you so we can create a version of global breath between us here germany and scotland yeah sound around the world well at least that part of the world mm -hmm.